And the compound clock will resume in 50 seconds. Compound clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. And we are at T-minus nine minutes and counting as Atlantis is preparing for launch on shuttle mission STS-112, less than nine minutes away at this point on a return mission to the International Space Station. The ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA test director Jeff Spaulding is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands. Pilot Pam Melroy is flipping the switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. And at this point, the orbiter access arm will be retracted away from the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle. Atlantis OTC, Godspeed as you construct the framework to change ancient dreams into a reality among the stars. Thank you very much. That was a note from our OTC, Jerry Goodson. T minus seven minutes and counting. NTDLPS. Go up, yes. Second RF glitch, we'll be working 27 volume 5. Section 121, Section 27B, inhibiting redundant switch on GPC A, O, I, and payload A. Okay, copy SD entity, you concur with that? SD concurs. Okay, copy that. And uh, GLS, uh, please insert a hold at time. GLS copies. And LPSD, have a go to proceed. And work. Entity SD, we don't. We DLP, so to see perform AP free start. It's gonna work. Copy FC again, please. Copy FC MTD, go ahead. Yes, are you complete with your reconfiguration? We are complete. And your nominal configuration to go for launch? That's permanent. Okay, and FC, you concur? FC concurs. Okay, copy that, and launch director MTD. MTD is launch director, you're clear to proceed. Okay, copy that. And GLS, we would like to remove the hold. Let's copy that to complete. Okay, I copy that. And attention all personnel, we will continue to count at T minus five minutes. We have resolved our issue. And we have a go for auxiliary power unit start. And the launch team has terminated liquid oxygen replenish to the external tank. T minus four minutes and counting. A final test of the flight control services will be conducted now. This is a program pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and other flight surfaces. Copy that. Coming up on final aero, aero surface checks of the orbiter's wing elevons and rudder. It's being completed at this point. This verifies the orbiter's hydraulic systems. Also, next, the three main engines will be gimbaled as a final test prior to launch. next event will be the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood as it's slowly retracted away from the top of the external tank. DLT copies in work. And everything continues to look good with the Space Shuttle Atlantis. And we are at T-minus two minutes and counting. OTC, PLT, caution and warning, memory clear, is complete, no unexpected messages. And 
Atlanta, Circuit C. Close walk your visors, initiate O2 flow. Give us a step for ET, LAC2 pressurization. Atlanta, Roger. T minus one minute and counting. All looks good for launch of Shuttle Atlantis from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. T minus 50 seconds. And we are transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Atlantis is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds and counting. 15 seconds. 13. 11. 9. 8. 7. 6. Go. Start. 2. Range 17 miles in altitude, traveling 2,800 miles per hour. One minute 45 seconds into the flight, about 20 seconds prior to solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer reports a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. Atlantis is on board computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel, aiming the shuttle for a precise target in space for main engine cutoff. Atlantis Houston, two engine tau. Atlantis Roger. That call from Capcom Ken Ham acknowledged by Commander Jeff Ashby indicating that if one engine should fail, Atlantis can make a transoceanic abort uh, to Zaragoza, Spain. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Two minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. Atlantis, 72 miles downrange, 47 miles in altitude, traveling almost 4,500 miles an hour. Atlantis Houston, negative return. Atlantis Roger. And that call up uh, confirming uh, that Atlantis uh, continues to head uphill. Capcom Ken Ham relaying that to Commander Jeff Ashby on board Atlantis. The orbiter and its six passengers on course and on time to reach the International Space Station on Wednesday. Ops three.
Five minutes, 50 seconds into the flight, Atlantis now 344 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, almost 70 miles in altitude. Atlantis Houston, single engine, Zaragoza 104, and press to Miko. Atlantis copy. As Atlantis rolls to its heads up position, uh, that call from Capcom Ken Ham indicating that we can make normal main engine cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Two minutes left in powered flight. Atlantis almost 700 miles downrange. Everything looking very good for an on-time main engine cutoff about 45 seconds from now. Eight minutes, five seconds into the flight of Atlantis, 780 miles downrange. Standing by for main engine cutoff which will be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Main engine cutoff confirmed by the booster officer here in Mission Control and normal ascent for Atlantis. And the booster officer reports a nominal separation of the external tank. Atlantis now moving away from its tank. We saw a nominal Miko, Ohms 1 not required. We saw L4D fail off, no action. Atlantis copy all, plus it's complete. That call from Capcom Ken Ham indicating. Uh, the failure of one of the small reaction control system jets on Atlantis that has no impact. So uh, after an on-time launch at 2.46 p.m. Central Time, 3.46 Eastern Time, Atlantis is now in its preliminary orbit, an orbit of 141 by 36 statute miles, that orbit uh, to be raised and uh, refined into a higher elliptical orbit. About uh, 45 minutes into the flight uh, through the firing of the orbital maneuvering system engine.